This is the multimedia screen that you're going to find inside of the Dodge Hornet. There are technically two different options that are available. Very similar look, just slightly different functionality. And the big difference is whether or not it has factory navigation. So if it had navigation, that would just show up along the side there on the outside. But this is going to be the basic home screen regardless. It's just that if you had factory nav, there would be a map here instead. But even if you don't have nav, it's not really a big deal because through this screen, you could still connect to use either Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze through iPhones or Google Maps through Android devices. But I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know. So starting off, there is a tray along the left side. So you can move between home screen, media, comfort, so your climate settings. You can connect a phone and then you've got some vehicle settings. So performance counters, your car info, trip counters, and things like that. But along the very top, You've also got another one, so you can adjust your climate settings this way instead. You could turn on heated seats, heated steering wheel. If your passenger side was set to something different, you could also sync them both up to whatever the driver's side is. You've got a little button along the top, and that's essentially your all categories. So that gives you the flexibility of seeing everything that's available. If you favored some things out, gone to recent, or basic category views instead. This one is going to be for profiles, so you can edit individual profiles to remember things like your cell phone, all of your presets for each individual driver. One of the big benefits there is that if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, it's going to remember everything for each person. So if you've got different people driving, I would definitely recommend setting up an individual driver. And then you can also go into valet mode. So you enter in a four digit number and that's going to lock the screen out so people wouldn't be able to navigate through and look through it. So very good safety setting if you're dropping it off to a valet. Along the very top, any notifications that might be available, what your outside temperature is, if you're connected over Wi-Fi, current time, which you can push in order to show a few other things. So you can see your rear camera, temperature outside, profiles, notifications, compass, hotspot, device manager, etc. But that's kind of nice. It's actually really nice and high def. If you had the option with the surround monitor, so the 360 camera, that would show up there instead. This is going to be media, so whatever's currently playing. You've got whether or not phone's connected, and then your passenger side settings on top of that. Now, very straightforward here, but one cool thing I love about these screens, so you could add a page in. So if you wanted to, you could choose a unique layout. So let's say we go layout two, that's added in another page, and you can also reorder. So let's say if you wanted to add in a widget because you wanted to customize this a little bit, like maybe you are a big fan of having your accessory gauges showing up along with, that would be a good one, technical gauges. So you could have your full gauges showing up on this screen instead. And that's the same way. Like if you had your maps showing up, you could kind of tweak these out a little bit and then you can also reorder the pages. So if you'd prefer to have these ones there first, you could edit that out. You could do a button press there in order to tweak out the widgets as well, or you can jump in to a full screen view instead. So I definitely recommend if you're a bigger fan of kind of the technical customizing yourself aspects, create your own unique screens because there are so many different things that you'd be able to add in there, which is kind of cool. Media along the bottom. So you've got all of your available sources. So AM, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, USB. So a USB port you could insert in order to listen to audio that way. You could hook your phone up if you just wanted to stream over Bluetooth. You don't have to connect to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So you could if you wanted to, you just don't have to. And then you can also hide or show media as you go along the side. What's currently playing, so I've got USB currently connected. But let's say if we were to go to FM, so you can see there FM stations. You can search for a station this way if you want to. And that's going to bump you into this. And then you've got browse, so if you're new to an area, and you're not sure what stations are available, you can look at all of the different options that were available. If you go back to playing, you could also save, oh, you could also save in a preset. So you've got all of your active presets there, but let's say if you wanted to save one in, once you've tuned to the station that you want, all you're gonna do, press and hold, heard the little chime, and it saved the station in. So it's that simple to be able to do it. You can browse a few different ways, as I mentioned, and then if you were to jump into Let's say Sirius XM. So you can see there a few other options. This one, a few useful ones. So if you click through, you can see what's going on with. So if you've got your Sirius XM account, you can log in. Artist radio. So if you've saved artists or st songs, whatever the case may be, 
You can see your listening history and then individual settings. So if you wanted to block explicit content, do a tune to start, things like that. And then just basic help and support. You can search this way as well. So you've got different views. Oh, neat. So you can see what's available. You could also add in a notification. So if the song or the artist comes on, it's going to notify you and let you know, and then you can tune to that station to listen to the song instead. You can tweak out stations that way if you want to. So it's actually really straightforward using this. Volume rocker, there it's one right down the center stack, or you can use the ones on the steering wheel there instead. Browse options, audio settings. So your basic there, you normally would see balance and fade first. And that means that you can adjust who's going to get audio priority as you go. Equalizer, so change out your bass, mid range and treble. I always just recommend, so bass cranked like three or four is usually pretty good. Treble down two, usually gives you really good audio, but let's do a quick little USB audio test. So that is car shaking, and this is just the base audio system. You've got the option for the upgraded one, but having these settings set up this way gives you really good audio. Speed adjusted volume, so as you go faster or slower, it's going to automatically adjust the volume for, for you. You can auto play when you go to plug in a device. Same idea with radio. Radio, do you want to turn off when you open up the door? Yes or no. And then volume adjustment for each individual thing. So media, what volume do you want that set to? What do you want your phone volume set to and your phone ringer set to as you go? So you've got quite a few options that are available there. Next up, series of comfort settings. So down the center stack, there are, let me drop you down so you can see, bam, all of your available audio, um, I should say climate control settings. So you can adjust it down the center stack this way if you want to, but you could also just adjust everything right through the multimedia screen for the most part. Like you can adjust your temperature, driver, passenger side, turn on your heated seats, heated steering wheel. Do you want this going to windshield face feet with a nice little animation? You can do a drag and drop to adjust your fan speed or just touch to adjust the fan speed instead. Sync, if you've got the passenger side set to something different, you can sync it up to the driver. Air conditioning, max AC or max defroster, I should say, rear window defroster. And then do you want your air circulation? Yes or no. Next up is adding in a phone. So as of right now, I mean, looking, there are no phones that are connected and setting a phone up is very straightforward. So do we want to set a phone up? Yes. On your phone, you connect. So we're going to connect there. We could change up the name. I'll show you how to do that in a second, but pins match up. So yes and yes to pair. Do you want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to say don't allow. And then that should. Do we want to use CarPlay while well, the phone is kind of doing so good? So one nice thing is that you've got the flexibility of using wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. I'm going to hit X out of that for now, but I'll show you this in just a second. So phone is currently connected for both phone and for audio. So if you didn't want to use it for your phone and you just wanted audio, you could do that. If you've got two phones connected, you can even have one set for phone and one for audio, which I'll show you in just a second. But you've got a series of settings, so you can set it as a favorite device. Enable the phone, Bluetooth audio, enter a charge only mode if you're connected over USB. You can disconnect or you can completely remove it. Very straightforward. You can press the phone there to jump into your dial pad, recents, favorite contacts and things like that, or jump back into the device manager. And then on the phone, so it does give us the flexibility of going through CarPlay if we want to. So you pull your phone back up and you can use CarPlay. And it should take a second there. Let's go CarPlay. Perfect. Three, two, one. Well, a few more seconds there, but you're fully connected. I love it. Nice and simple through the screen. You can see what's going on. So what audio app you're listening to, you can push here in order to get to this screen instead, which is kind of nice. Now along the side, you've got a little tray. So current time, what's going on with your connection, battery levels, which map application was open last, which audio application was open last. So if you're opening up podcasts, and then it's like which miscellaneous app was opened up last. So that would be things like phone, calendar, and things like that. So you can adjust any of these out. You've got Apple Maps, no pinch to zoom capability, but drag and drop. You can zoom in and out this way if you want to. You can go 2D, 3D, change out different options there. Search for addresses, look at previous destinations. 
moving back home. Google Maps, same basic idea. So you can do a drag around, but no pinch to zoom. You've got to go this way, in and out that way instead. Hit done, you can search for addresses, or you can look at route options, so avoiding highways, toll roads, ferries, look at satellite maps, traffic maps, north up, and then it's roughly the same idea with ways. So ways, drag and drop, but you could also zoom in and out this way if you want to, search for addresses, you could push there in order to use your microphone. You could also do a push and hold on the steering wheel in order to activate your Siri assistant. So it's really nice you've got that available as an option if you prefer to just use Siri instead of going through the system here. Then button press there and button press there to get back to this main screen. So it's very straightforward to use it. And then one nice thing through your phone, you can go general, CarPlay, find your vehicle. I think it was this one. You can forget the car, toggle CarPlay off, or you can customize. So if you're a big fan of listening to podcasts and maybe you want to have Google Maps up first, you've got the flexibility to do it. If you're not a fan of certain apps, you can delete them. It removes them from the screen, but it adds it in at the bottom of the phone. So if you deleted apps, you've got that flexibility of adding them back in. If you've played around with the screen too much, you just hit reset along the top, reset screen layout, and that just brings this back to the factory default screen instead. You can push there to launch the phone or go back into the device manager instead, which gets you out of CarPlay. And then you could reconnect to the phone by disconnecting CarPlay and it's that simple to do it. So it's that simple setting up iPhones inside of the Hornet. Next up, setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So if you weren't on the device manager screen, let's say if you were on the home screen, you can go into your phone, press phone again in order to launch into the device manager. And then from there you can see you've got your phone that's connected. You can add a phone, do not disturb, or press plus there to search for Bluetooth devices. So let's scan on the Android. There we go, you connect. Perfect, pin numbers match up. So we're gonna hit okay and yes. Do you wanna to connect to Android Auto? So you can act, give it access to messages and contacts. I'm just gonna hit deny for now. And that's just gonna kick off an error message if you were to launch back into the phone. But this is it here, Android Auto. So we're gonna hit okay. We'll get back to that screen as well in just a second, but it's connecting through Android right now. Look at that, Android Auto. Let's continue. Boom, three, two, one. And I mean, we're fully connected there. But I mean, look at that. Same idea, same nice look in the screen itself. You could push if you wanted to go back to this kind of like split screen. This phone does have Waze installed, but I mean, as you can see there, the only map application you've got is going to be just Google Maps. But I mean, look at this. Nice, responsive, pinch to zoom capability as well on the Android side. That's like the one thing I love with Android is that it does have pinch to zoom capabilities. You can search for addresses. You can hop in to go to root options. The same thing we saw on the iPhone side of things to go through toll roads and things like that. Recenter along the very bottom. You can activate your Google Assistant that way or very similar to the iPhone side. You can push and hold the voice command prompt on the steering wheel in order to activate it that way instead. Along the very bottom, you've got what's currently going on with audio. Oh, wrong one. Press this button in order to get to the split screen again. And then along the bottom, you've got a little hot button tray to go to a few things. Your current time, connection, and battery level. And then pushing this button in order to go back to this basic home screen again. So you can push there, you connect, which hops you out of the screen. And that gets you back to this device manager summary screen. Now one nice thing I did mention, we can go and have multiple phones connected. If you've got two phones connected, it's who's gonna get connection priority. So you can have one of them sit as the favorite. But one really cool thing is that you can have one connected for phone, one connected for audio. So if you've got all of your songs, everything like that on a certain phone, and you wanted to use the other one for audio, you've got that flexibility. So you can kind of do a mix and match between these four items. So you can either have both phones connected for audio and for your phone, or you can have one or the other, but it can either be Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So it's not gonna be both of them. So it's either one of these, any of these four. So you can kind of do a mix and match and play around there. So it's straightforward. To delete, you just go through, press delete. Yes, same idea, let's get rid of this one as well. Delete, delete, yes. And it's that simple being able to set up a phone inside of the Dodge Hornet.
moving into vehicle settings. So as a default, it's typically gonna jump you into performance, but starting off with my car along the top, you can see your service interval when you're due for service, how your tires are doing, drive mode explorer. So as of right now, you can see engine torque limiter off, gas pedal and normal, steering, etc. But if you move yourself into sport mode, gives you sport shifting, sport steering, and a, th and a few other things. So it's essentially going to give you an infinitely or sportier performance compared to the auto mode. So I'm gonna have this one in the vehicle when I go for a test drive. And you can either toggle it on through the screen or there's a button that you can also push on the steering wheel itself to go through that option. Trip counters are right through the middle there. So there's nothing through the cluster screen for trip counters. It's all done through this media screen. You've got trip A, trip B, and then you can also reset very simply that way instead. So three different options that are available. Options for your performance. So technical gauges for your turbo and for your torque. As you go, consumption history. So you can see how much you've used or reset. Accessory gauges. So oil, transmission, temp, battery levels, and things like that. So that's kind of cool. And that's the basic summary screen that we saw on the home screen that I custom set up. So all of the technical gauges, it's kind of neat. So you can go through so many different options. It's good. Options for controls. So as big and as bright as the screen is, if it's too much, you can turn it off. Button press to turn it back on or button press to get back into your camera. Series of options for settings. So language, you can go either Spanish, English, Italian, or French, a lot of options. Display mode. So it's either going to be an auto or a manual mode. When you're in the auto mode, some things become default grayed out, and that's because you're not manually adjusting them. So you could adjust out if you want to. You can set different themes. So if you wanted to, either theme one, theme two. Very subtle, small changes along the background there. Nothing too crazy with the different themes. Units, if you wanted to measure out. Ooh, da, 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 da. Why is this doing that? Hello? Oh, there we go. Perfect. All right, units. So speed, you can go kilometers or miles. Distance, same idea. Your tire pressure, how are you measuring that out? Temperature, fuel consumption, how are you measuring your torque levels out? A few options. The beeping that you get, you could turn it off. Get rid of your main labels. Cluster options. You can also tweak a few things. So you want to show your trip counter, yes or no. Do you want to customize some certain things? So do you want to, oh, that's kind of neat, customize your date time so you can show different things in different parts of the screen itself. So there's not a ton of options that are available. You've got some basic options though. Widget list so you can show what's currently going to be showing inside of the cluster screen as well. My profile, same idea in your profile, do you want to have it? English, Spanish, French, and that's not for overall, that's just for your individual setting. Safety and driver assistance settings. Do you want to have emergency braking? So if the vehicle senses a potential collision, it's going to do nothing. It can warn you or can actively brake for you in case of a potential collision. Lane sensing system. So if you start to veer over into a lane without signaling, it's going to do a few things. So it can bump you back into your lane in order to keep you perfectly balanced. Traffic sign right inside of the cluster screen, yes or no traffic sign assist warning. So if you're going a little bit fast, it can let you know, gives you the option of plus or minus for a few kilometers. If you don't want to get a notification, if you're going like 10 over, whatever the case may be. Park sensing volume. So the volume that you get as you back up, low, medium, or high volume, and then your blind spot alert. So if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, do you want to just get lights? Do you want to get lights and chime? Or do you want nothing to happen? I'm personally a fan of just getting the lights, but it's a matter of preference clock and date. You could set the time manually if you want to. You could also adjust the minutes, AM, PM. That is definitely off. What are we at? Two o'clock right there? Yeah, or one o'clock. Sorry, that's so let's adjust that. One o'clock PM. Perfect. You could go either 12 hour or 24 hour mode if you prefer the military time. You want to set your date and you want to show the date and time when the screen's off. That's a useful one. Bluetooth manager. We saw some of these things earlier. So if you wanted to go into device manager, do not disturb. Options for camera. So do you want a delay or your active guidelines? So the guidelines, if the vehicle's in reverse, are these guidelines there. So whether or not that one shows up is going to be a matter of preference. So if we turn it off, back in reverse, you can see those guidelines are gone. I'm personally a big fan of the lines, but matter of preference. Mirrors and wipers. So you've got auto folding side view mirrors when you go to lock the vehicle. 
rain sensing wipers on off and then headlights with wipers means that it's automatically going to turn your wipers on for you when your headlights are on interior lighting with the strength of that lighting different options for lights big one is going to be so headlight off delay so when you go to lock the vehicle do the lamp stay on for or do they just go off 30 seconds what is it 30 60 or 90. yeah so a few different options so when you go to lock the vehicle how long do your headlamps stay on for greeting lights on the outside auto dimming high beams so do you want your auto high beams going on which means that if your high beams are on oncoming car comes on it's going to lower your high beams for you and then bring them back on again do you want your daytime running lights on and then do you want your lights to flash when you go to lock the door brakes do you want your auto parking brake engaged i'm not a big fan of that one so i'm going to say no to that doors and locks do you want your vehicle or you want your doors to automatically lock do you want your doors to automatically unlock for you when you park do you want your lights to flash do you want your horn to come on when you press the lock button once or when it's twice do you want your horn to sound when you remote start? Passive entry means that as long as you've got the fob on you, you can slide your hand in behind the door to get inside. Seats in comfort. So when you go to remote start the vehicle, do you want the vehicle to automatically turn on the cabin heat and cool and whatever the case may be? Key off options. Do you want your radio off? So delay. So when you turn the vehicle off, does your radio stay on for 20 minutes? Audio settings, which we've already seen when we were in the media settings earlier notifications, Sirius XM setup, which we saw in our media, back down for software updates. Always recommend option for downloading over Wi-Fi, but you do need to download, you do need to connect yourself in order to be able to do this. I honestly recommend having it update automatically for you by doing this. So if any, if it recognizes that there are updates available, it's going to let you know version information. So which version are you running off of? And then you can reset. So you can restart your radio if it's given you issues. You could clear all personal data if you're selling the vehicle, bring everything back to a factory default screen, refault, reset all of your performance values as well. So there's quite a few options that are available inside this. I still love it. All the accessory and technical gauges and things like that. So dang cool. Um, I know that's a lot of information, but that's everything you need to know about the Uconnect screen with the exception of factory navigation. So if I do have a factory nav walkthrough available, you'll find it down in the description of the video. The big thing you need to know for factory nav is that you can search by GPS coordinates. You could search by a few other things. So by point of interest icons, category views, and things like that. Uh, it's very straightforward, but that is absolutely everything that you need to know about the Uconnect screen inside of the Dodge Hornet.